Joshua Rubin from East West Sailing Informants. Today I want to talk to you about carrageenans. Now, I know most of you have heard of this and some of you haven't heard of this, but it's important to know where these things are coming from. Now, if you read the beginning of the YouTube, you saw that it's in things of food nature, but it's also in things like hygiene products, sexual lubricants. So we're actually using things on hygiene products that we actually ingest. So you have to ask yourself, these things are actually healthy for us. And if you really do the re research on what carrageenans are, and most of you are actually exposed to these when, you, when you're drinking dairy, eating ice cream, drinking silk soy milk, uh, eating tofu, um, things like that. And the problem is people really don't understand the downfalls of this. And if you study the work of Volkenheimer, Ray Pete, you study the work of uh, Tabakman, uh, I'm going to read my people here, um, Toshihiko, um, I can't, uh, Linhart, um, who else did I research in regards to this? I would say that's, that's a good enough um, amount of people. They talk about what carrageenans are. Now, we have MSG, which is actually extracted from rice, and we say that MSG is actually natural and healthy. Well, just like carrageenan is extracted from seaweed using an alkaline solvent, it's actually very, very, very acidic to the point if you put it on your skin, it would actually tear your skin off, just like any acid would per se. So it's very acidic. They have to use an alkalinic solvent to break it down. So they pull the carrageenan out of the seaweed, and they call it natural. Well, there's a lot of research, of course, on the internet and everywhere else to say that it's healthy and it can't hurt us. And the FDA, FDA says it can't hurt us because there's such lard, large um, molecules that they can't slip through the gut. Well, let's look at what this does first. When you drink something or eat something or even put something on your skin that has this in it, it creates a gooey, thick, um, honey-like coating in the GI system or anywhere else that you actually ingest it, I should say. Any, not just the stomach, anywhere else. The problem with this is it can create inflammation, digestive distress, on and on and on. Now, if you're already stressed, which most people are, you're going to have decreased blood flow in other things, decreased digestive enzymes, pancreatic enzymes, uh, liver gallbladder output, on and on and on, hydrochloric acid, to those systems. And what can happen is now when you eat the food particles or just foods that you're eating in the presence of carrageenan, there's even more inflammation created. And now you're not even getting small food particles slipping through the intestinal wall into, we should say, the liver or um, creating an immune system reaction, you're going to get large and small small food particles slipping through. So you're going to get even more of an immune system reaction. And the carrageenan itself will even slip through, which overload the liver, overload the immune system, leading to many different dysfunctions with autoimmune diseases, hormonal imbalances, you name it. Because if you're actually stressed, and there's inflammation because of the carrageenan that you're eating or in the substances that you're eating, when it creates the inflammation, these food particles slip through, you create an immune system reaction which can just build, 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 and build. Of course, there's hormonal things that can happen. I'm going to go over that just in a basic sense. Just remember this, guys. It's YouTube. It's a chance for me to share my work with you, not give you a one-on-one -on -one webinar. At the same time, it can overload the liver. Now the liver has issues detoxifying estrogen, so it can lead to a hormonal imbalance, estrogen dominance, heart conditions, cancer, blood clotting, you name it. So let's look at carrageenan and what it can do to the body. It actually can downregulate macrophages, which is part of your immune system. We could say it's like the Zamboni that cleans up the ice or Pac-Man. And when you don't have those, you can actually build up um, an immune system response as well as an autoimmune disease. It can actually, in the presence of uh, radiated foods or radiation like x-rays going to the airport, polyunsaturated fatty acids, and excess estrogen in the body, the carrageenans can become super toxic. And... Um, Tabakman showed, I'm going to try to find where I wrote this down, that when we eat carrageenan, and so did Ray Pete, that the FDA hasn't really looked at, well, when you're eating them, how do they interact with the bacteria in the gut? Well, Ray Pete talks about this, and so does Tabakman. I'm trying to find my um, little thing that I wrote down here. Um, that when we eat these, uh, here we go, Dr. Uh, to Tabakman showed that when we eat these, they actually, as well as Ray P, interact with the enzymes in our gut. And the problem is, when they interact with the enzymes in the gut, they convert the high-weight carrageenans into low-weight uh, molecular weight carrageenans into the human gut. And these actually have been linked to many digestive issues, autoimmune diseases, hormonal imbalances, and cancer. So the problem is, it's the carrageenan itself creating the inflammation, but it's also how our bacterial uh, gut and flora interact with them. And Ray P even talks about how most women with um, uh, lupus and most women with premenstrual syndrome, because of the carrageenan, 
Um, and because of its interaction with lactobacillus, it'll actually perpetuate lupus and hormonal imbalances, things like that. So it's the interaction in the gut that's important as well as not just what we're eating. Um, he talks about how carrageenan can actually inhibit what's called cytochrome P450 in the liver, which is phase one detoxification. And this is the part of detoxification that helps the body detoxify drugs, hormones, and things like that. So if carrageenan is actually inhibited this, now we can have a buildup of toxins in our body and estrogen, which can lead to even more problems. Of course, I talked about carrageenan creates inflammation, which when it does that, you can actually get the reabsorption of estrogen in the small intestine as well as the absorption of endotoxin in the intestine, which can lead to more hormonal imbalances, liver issues, estrogen dominance, increased inflammation. Um, the carrageenan itself, when you create that reabsorption or absorption of endotoxin, actually creates inflammatory markers, inflammatory free radicals, nitric oxide, inflammatory prostaglandins. Um, what else? <clears throat> And carrageenan can actually, and this is according to Ray Pete, all these are according to Ray Pete, um, can change the cellular func function and imitate cancer uh, cells in the body and send false signals. So it can actually mimic the signs of cancer in a sense and perpetuate the proliferation of cells. So we're looking at something that we're taking in. Uh, the FDA says it's not dangerous because it's large. We can't actually absorb it. Ray Pete talks about that in his article, how according to presorption we can actually absorb large particles. But the problem is... It's the creating the inflammation that causes other food particles to slip through the small intestine, create an autoimmune response, overload the liver, cause a hormone imbalance, and really just create systemic inflammation. So the bottom line is this. If all that was too much, the science of it is too much, you know, I wanted to make this as quick as I could, but Maury coming on seven minutes, really look at what you're eating, because maybe it's not what you're eating that's causing the problem. It can be, like if you're drinking soy milk, I don't care if there's carrageenan in it or not, you shouldn't be drinking it. But the bottom line is if it has carrageenan in it, it actually could be the carrageenan, right, that's causing the digestive distress and not the ice cream or the dairy. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you learned something, and I'm out of here.